Tana, did you hear about the new Paisano's deal? More pizza, less dough. Medium, one topping, $5.99. Are you out of your mind? I'm going to order it right now, buddy. What's the code? Yes, 599 Pizza. Hurry up, man. Press send. I'm hungry. I'm on it, buddy. I'm yes. On it. Coming up on the Santana Mall Show, it's a little different this week. I don't have my partner in crime, Travis. He took his experience on the road with the wife and kids. But I had my other partners in crime through my playing years, Clinton Portis and Rock Gotti Cartwright. The Santana Mall Show starts now. This is Santana Mall Show. Number 89, hustle all the time. Travis on the right, hot mic on the left. Every single week, it's a lyrical fact. I'm ready to go. Welcome to the Santana Mall Show. You're going to have to bear with me today because I was prepped and ready to have my man rock. Caught right on the show with me today, and and guess what? I'm I'm running things Rock today. Got it. I don't have Travis here. Travis is somewhere. I'm filling in for on Travis. A couple of man. Drinks. I'm filling in for and Travis. And look who walked in the door. I got my man Clint Porter. So um, welcome to the Santana Moss Show. You got yourself. You got your, yours truly, Santana Moss. My man Clint Porter's and Rock Cartwright. Both of these guys shared uh, um, a, a few years with me with the Skins and. Now that we retire, we do so much off the field and, you know, me and Porter's behind the cameras, in front of the cameras. I got the luxury to have both of them here at my third annual Moss Academy football camp. They're going to talk to my kids a little later, but right now we're going to talk about the Redskins. But before we get into the Redskins, I want to ask these fellas what they've been up to, ladies. So I'm going to start with you, Porter. What you been up to, man? Everything that you've been up to. Down in Orlando, chasing these kids around, getting black. Man, yeah. I promise you I was light-skinned <laughs> before the summer started, but uh, I got the podcast, 26 Minutes, yeah. for those of you all who haven't checked it out. Other than that, just traveling, enjoying vacay. What about you, Gotti? Oh, man, just been golfing a little bit, taking care of my kids, man. Um, just enjoying the weather. It's hot as heck, but now enjoying what people, the sunshine. No, nah, I didn't mean to cut you off, but what people don't know is me and Rock are, are we're neighbors now. And we was neighbors, actually, when we was playing. been neighbors. Exactly. <laughs> but now he moved directly next door to me. Yeah, so right next door. It's, 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 it's a great feeling knowing you can walk out the door and, and see his kids out in the yard. Hey, I, I'm glad I wish I had y'all grown up. now and you can't mistakenly get that <laughs> knock on the door. <laughs> hey, I'm here for God. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but um, one of the things that we're here for, you know, one of the real reasons is um, I'm having my third annual uh, Moss Academy football camp. Started this thing about three years ago and I started it right a little before I you know, started my foundation. Uh, my foundation 89 Ways to Give and me and my uh, manager Miss Carmen Fielder, we decided to do a camp every year and this is the third year and these guys will be talking to my kids you know, after lunch today and one of the things I try to do is bring in you know, folks that whether I play ball with them or professionally, you know, I rub some kind of elbows with them in the, you know, the area just to show these kids something more or give them something more than what they see every day. Um, you know, I want to ask you guys, what are some of the things you're going to share with the kids today when you get a chance to chat with them? Uh, for me, this is just about making good decisions. Uh, you know, with social media and all the stuff we got going on today, you can put some stuff on at an early age. It can come back to bite you. So basically just making good decisions, um, doing the right thing, because we all know what's right and wrong, you know. Mm -hmm. So just, just reiterating that point to those no guys. No doubt, no doubt. I think that's so hard as a parent, uh, and we've had this discussion before, is kids' decision-making. Like, when we were kids, we were riding bikes, like, mm -hmm. we were doing stuff, but you were responsible. Now yeah. kids are so irresponsible. It's like video games have just taking control of their mind social media so they do stuff without thinking you mm -hmm. know and it's consequences to that yeah and like you know like rock was saying it's consequences to it but for me it's, it's really just a belief in yourself this yeah. is where you develop that mentality this is where you have to start competing and believing in yourself because everyone is not going to know your talent no one is going to know your dream or your vision until you go out and prove it so i think this is the perfect age you know I mean, having these kids running around that's dead on and that's something that these guys hear from me every day you know one of the things i come here and in the morning i start off by you know uh, you know telling them that it's all about competition one but at the same time some of the things that we're giving you are keys to your success you know what i mean like if if I was in school and someone gave me the answers to every test, then I would get straight A's. And I'm telling these kids, when you're out here with us on the field, we're giving you the keys 
to success. We're trying to build character, one, and we're trying to give you the attitude, build that attitude up to know how to be successful. Regardless if you're playing sports or you're just being, you know, having a great career down the road in life, you know, we're trying to give you those tools. So um, I have a, a great bunch, and they're going to pay attention. A lot of them, you know, I quiz every now and then, and that's one of the things I like about them because, you know, they've heard me reiterate so much about paying attention that this, this is going to give you the key, give you that head start to, to, to being ahead of the curve. And uh, that's one of the reasons why I have these camps because um, my background, I went to school to be an educator. You know, I wanted to be a teacher. I knew I wasn't going to be a teacher, but some down right down the line, I would be able to use that degree in coaching and something else. I knew mentor. you weren't going to be a teacher either because your vocabulary <laughs> used to be mostly curse words. So see, I knew that wasn't going to work See, I out. knew his thing was going to spice up a little bit. I knew having him on was going to spice up. And, and guess what? Everyone knows, all my SMS fans know that I told you before, my vocabulary was very thin. But, you know, I've been, hey, trust me, I'm proud of myself because I come hey, a long way. You know what's crazy? I always say, when people ask me what's West Santana up to? I said, I think he's running for mayor. Yeah. Like, like, I've never seen anyone do more charity work, which is great on yeah. your behalf. And I think what, what you do with Carmen is great because every day, I say, man, it's impossible. I love doing charity work. Yeah. I don't mind doing charity work, but Santana dedicates yeah. every day he's going to do something. Like, I don't want to be that busy. Yeah. I'm retired. I appreciate it. So look, you know, one of the things I got these guys here for, I'm not going to sit here and we're not going to talk too much about something that you guys don't want to hear. So I know every time, you know, we on this thing, we talking a little red skins. And these guys are my teammates under two coaches. You're under two coaches. And I think uh, the first one is obvious, Coach Gibbs. Uh, and the second one was Coach Zorn. Mm. I know that name not don't <laughs> ring don't, don't want to be you know you know I know he don't want to hear it again I'm not gonna say his name but he said Nick got, got a problem with him what, too what, what I want to ask you guys what I want to ask you guys what was what was the difference through our time with Coach Gibbs through those years from 05 and 07 when we had those those you know those playoff runs and the time with Zorn I'm gonna start with you guys how was that. That difference with those two coaches. Well, first off, you had a coach who had been a head coach and had won numerous Super Bowls and knew what it took mm -hmm. to win Super Bowls, opposed to a coach who was just originally going to be an offensive coordinator yeah. and then he get thrown the head head coaching job. So, uh, with me, Coach Gibbs was one of the most loyal, uh, one of the most humbling coaches I've ever yeah. had the experience to be around. With Coach Zorn, it was just a totally different feel. Uh, him and I bumped heads a couple of times, and uh, <laughs> I think see here, see more than a couple of times. <laughs> but yeah, we had our we had our shared differences. But it, you know, it was it was just Coach Gibbs was my guy, man. That's, yeah. that's why I ended no up playing for. I think when you look at Coach Gibbs, Coach Gibbs was a leader. And when you say leader, you're talking about on and off the field. This was a guy that was honest. This was a guy that was upfront. You could go to Coach Gibbs. It was truth. And he was going to teach you how to be an athlete, how to be a man. You yeah. know, um, when you look at the, the other side, he, he got an opportunity to do something and he screwed it up. That's how you look at it. And it's really not nothing else to say about it. Yeah, you know, um, it's, 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 it's odd a little bit because I've been put on that seat before and they asked me how did I feel about Zorn knowing that CP had an ill feeling about him. And I say, I say it all the time, I say, you know what, it's crazy. Um, the one thing that I didn't like about Zorn is that he tried to make everybody the same. You know, we all know that, you know, um, when you have a team – they come from all different walks of life. And they have experienced different things to get to where they're at right now. You have some guys that just live a different way. And then you have guys that are Christians. You have guys that are whatever. They listen to whatever they want to listen to country. You have, you, you know, you name it. You have guys that just walk a different walk. And I learned from different coaches that you got to know your team. You have to allow them to be them. But at the same time, when they come between them white lines and when they're in those meeting rooms, one band, one sound. Yeah. I think Zorn tried his best to make us what he wanted us to be, and that's why I didn't end up into wins. Yeah. And that's one of the things I had, you know, I had a flaw with him with, because just only that. He tried to get me the ball, so I love that. At the end of the day, if you're trying to do that, that's more, you know, you know more than I can ask for. But when it comes to trying to make me somebody else, right. I, didn't, I didn't rock with him with that. Listen, for people that think I had a problem with Zorn, 
I actually wanted to buy into Zorn. No, rock I, you was, but I rock had to stop you from Zorn. fighting man one day. That's rock, <laughs> rock cussed Coach Zorn out way more times than I did. Because <laughs> Rock was a hothead. Every, every day, like... Hold on. It, it, Hold on. Time out. We're going to be honest. We're going to be honest on here today. <laughs> did you not come out there in flats one day and I had to get Yeah, <laughs> but that was way... I had been practicing in flats. I know you have. always. You have. You I have. had yeah, always have. practicing in flats. It was never you an have. issue. And then all of a sudden when we start losing, now this becomes an issue. Yeah. When I become I done came out in sandals. Are yeah. you kidding me? This what like, you realize. This what you realize. When it's win when you win it, everything is cool, right? Yeah. As soon as you start to lose, every little thing is being nitpicked about. Yeah, and I you're think right. that's I think that and was that's, the situation. That's, that life. You know, that's, that's life. That's just that's you know, just what happened. You know, man. it's crazy, you know, as that sound and, and we're talking about and since we're talking about Zorn, because we experienced something other than that. Um, at the time, me and Portis had something going on. It wasn't a ritual, but it was something that we just done. And here I am. I, we sitting in front of the meeting, and I'm I'm probably second, third row. I always sat in the front, had my seat from day one when I got here in 05. And he just named whatever we was doing, some um, thing that we, some tribute to Sean Taylor. And I'm sitting there like, what are you talking about? And he's like, well, I hear you guys are doing this. And. First of all, I only speak for one nip. man. I only mm. speak for one man. Yeah. And when he, after he said what he said, I let him do what he do. I'm not finna ask no questions. Look, I've been doing this for a while. I'm not finna say anything. But then he came to me with it. And he didn't come directly to me. A player came to me first. I'm not gonna say any names. Then my receiver Uncle coach, came, my receiver coach came to me with it. And then, so when I got you know, uh, bombarded by those two guys, I took the initiative and said, hey, you know what? I'm going to go out there and talk to the head man and ask him, do he have a problem with me doing what I do? So I stepped to, you know, Coach Zorn after I was approached by the other two fellas, and I say, hey, Coach, um, you know, something you spoke on earlier about guys taking a nip before the game. I don't know about guys because I'm just that dude. I'm not finna talk about nobody else but myself. I say, but I'm one of those guys. And I say, what I want to ask you is, before you was here, I was doing that. And... I ain't had no problem. Do you have a problem with my game? And he say, oh, you do that, Tanner? Like he was disgusted <laughs> and hurt at the same time, thinking that uh, whatever he thought of me, I appreciated. But he was like, he was hurt. And he was like, doesn't it make you feel different? I say, no. That's why I'm asking you, do you have a problem with my game? But the entire issue wasn't your game. It that wasn't. message was designed for the one person who they thought was the culprit. They yeah. thought it was only me. Yeah. Not to know that it was it was way more than me and you. It was we deeper started, than Portis. But it the, was person, deeper than the, the person that sat next to me, like it, the person that I sat next to in the locker room just so happened to, I'm sitting next to now. Who, me? My, oh, yeah, that's me. my bottle used to be, be lower than it was supposed to be. Yeah. You know, but yeah. at the same time, I've never mentioned this. Yeah. I've never came out and said, oh, well, Rock a grown man. Yeah, exactly. Rock was over 21. He could do what he wanted yeah. to do. I've never came out and said, yeah. oh, God, it was drinking or so-and-so was drinking. It was more than us. Yeah. But we were winning. Yeah, we was winning. That's yeah. what's we crazy. We were winning. And things kind of went, you know, it spiraled downhill. And um, when they stopped taking, you stopped taking hips. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pain kick in. <laughs> hey, we we kept our same regimen because it was it wasn't a regimen. It was just something that we was accustomed to doing, and it came way before the NFL. It came way before we even met Kozorn. You know, only thing I knew about Kozorn is what he's did. You know, throughout his years of playing, and so uh, it was way before him. So I'm I'm glad that we went down that road with him because he understood. It's different guys are built. Everybody's different. different. The biggest yeah. issue is guys begin to do it. That wasn't performing. Yeah, right. That yeah. was the that was the real biggest issue. It, you started having guys doing it like it was cool, like, like it's mm -hmm. the club. It's, yeah, and they weren't performing, and no one ever wanted to call them guys out. No mm -hmm. one ever yeah. wanted to say them guys. And that's why we didn't really win because we didn't have everybody accountable for their actions. You know, it, it's look at the end of the day. That's why I said I stepped to him and said, "Hey, it's me. I can't talk about nobody else. Let me know when I'm doing something wrong." And if you want me to stop, I'll stop <laughs> with a wink because I want to hey, stop right. doing what I do. You know what I'm saying? But since we on the Redskins, since we just got off of those coaches and everything, uh, I want to talk to you guys. I got, I, got the, I got the luxury of having two running backs. You know, I got, I got, got my man CP that done him for a while. Rock was his backup. He was a guy that we called on plenty of times to do so many things that you couldn't ask of too many backups to do. Uh, let's talk about their running Hold back Hold on, before you year. say that, when you, when you say Rock was – uh, how you just say that? First off, 
I always tell people, mm -hmm. you know, when they talk about favorite teammates, I always say Rock, Chris, you, Sean. But when you look at everything Rock would do, yeah. Rock was on every special team. Yeah. He ran all the scout team. Mm -hmm. And then he always ran the offense through the week because I wasn't trying to get out there yeah. and do nine on seven in practice. So Rock always did it. And he did it without complaining. Yes. He did it without. I would talk to Rock. If anybody I talked to beforehand, Rock come say, hey, CP, what you going to do? What you going to do so I can get my mind yeah, right? So you get mind did right. I not tell you straight up, hey, I, I'm, I'm going to give yeah, you something right. or I'm not? You yeah. tell me what you need me to give you. And that's what I gave you. But anytime it came game day, I remember maybe who was that, San Fran or the Jets? San Fran. I think we were playing San Fran. No, it was Denver. It was the Broncos. We were playing Denver, and you were in the game. I, something happened where I came out, and you had to go in the game a couple plays, and you came back, and you was like, Spanky, you got to get your ass back in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got to get your hey, ass I back in there. I tell you this, man. I got the utmost respect. For the guys, the, the number one back, you know, because yeah. the ball, you took a lot of pounding, man. You know, carrying that ball 25, 30 times a game, man, you took a lot of pounding, man. I can only imagine how you felt, you know, yeah. during the week. Because I only played 20 plays a game. That was mm -hmm. a special team. But I felt it took me Sunday to Sunday to get ready to play, too, so I can just imagine how you feel. So, um, yeah, man, you, you, you did your thing. Bro. One of the things I had planned on doing, not knowing that CP was going to be available for me, is just talk to you about your experiences and some of the things that's going to take place this year. While we was on that, and, and, and I, I, want, I want to go over that a little bit more in detail. See, yeah, I said Rock was a backup, but tr trust me, I watched some of the things that CP just talked about, and you can't get guys to do that this day in this game. You know, beyond uh, being a backup, this guy was called on special team. I mean, ran the special team, had that jersey on where he was going to be the starting back for the other team, then came and ran hey, CP but I, I did used to sub for you all the time on scout team. <laughs> yeah, like, you like hey, you I used to sub for you on scout he, team, he, he man. Did his special, he, you know, so, so on, on scout team, ran those plays. He was a special team demon, did everything that they asked him to do. And then when CP had those flats on, like I talked about, you know, <laughs> like I said, you know, you know, you know, y'all know how I talk highly of you know CP when it comes to just some guys are freaking nature. He's one These of those guys. He's got a flat. He was a guy that come out there. He had no cleats on, and you say CP. CP actually was the first guy that made me go outside the box a little bit with things I did because I felt like I'm like you know what? I think he made a lot of bro. People like I had to say, I say. You know, CP told me one day, you know, I had a long weekend. And CP was like, you you crazy if you finna come out here and practice today, bro. I'm like, that's all I know. He said, man, you better go in there and go in that room and say you got a headache or you got a, you, you sit. And I did it. And guess what? It was the best decision I made because think about it. If I come out there feeling the way I felt, not knowing what I could have pulled or what could have yeah. happened to me, I got rest the next day. They bashed me in the media. You know, they said I had a whiskey flu because it was my birthday weekend. But the next day I came out firing and I ran through the practice like it was nothing. But um, just to give you credit, Rock, you know, yeah, you was a guy. And CP spoke about it before I said, I, I swear I wrote it down because I'm asked numerous of times, who are some of your favorite guys on the team? And I was like, well, everybody I was cool with. That's, that's my honest to God answer. Yes, I had guys that I knew personally on a different level in CP, but to be truthfully, you was one of those guys that I could say, yeah, Rock was a favorite of mine. We was That was one of my favorite teammates because I knew you a little more than just in that locker room, you know? And you didn't know how much I appreciate you. I'm glad we on the show today so that I can give you that appreciate. That's why I wanted you here, especially to talk to my kids because, see, what kids are mesmerized, uh, uh, mesmerized by now with social media and all those other, these other outlets, they see these stars. They see guys who make themselves a star. And you was a star in your own making because you did things. That's why you lasted so long in this league, you know, in your at your position, because you did things that the normal guy couldn't do. You know, it's, it's, it's no one will be able to take the pounding that you took. Also, having to go out there and have all those reps in practice on both sides, then run your special team plays, and then in, in come Sunday, you can take a back seat and say, well, I, whenever I'm hey, called, I'm going to go out and do it. Before he got to Sunday, I rewarded him three times during the week because <laughs> I fed him Wednesday. You did. I fed him <laughs> Thursday. Yeah, you did. You and did. I fed him uh, so, on, on so uh, was in Saturday. Town? No. We used to always it, it, yeah. get food. Get oh, okay. food Every time. time we yeah. went, you know we always no, got food because y'all used yeah. to come over I there. I know how you did. Sometimes you'd be like, nah, bro. Oh, yeah, you're right. You yeah, have, you exactly. You come into the meeting rooms. You're right. You're absolutely right. Well, I appreciate that, man. That's big coming from you. 
No doubt, no doubt, Rob. Words, that's why you, but so let's get on to what I was asking earlier. Um, you know, how y'all feelings about this running back room now? You know, we to me it's a beefed up running back room. You have AP who showed you last year he still can run it. He got a thousand yards, or uh, probably could have had more, you know, dealing with the line that he had to deal with. Uh, you have a guys that you know, before he even got hurt last year, I was knocking on wood because I could see the guy that he is. And I'm like, you know what? He's going to be antsy to go out there and prove himself. And he ended up getting hurt doing that. And then you have a guy in CT that he's been a dominant third down back. You know, he's um, also had his nicks in here and there. But um, now all these guys are pretty much healthy. Uh, how do you see this thing panning out for these guys? Go ahead, CP. Yeah, you. you take it because I'm going to finish after you. All right. Well, I, I mean, I like all three of the guys. I mean, got all three different styles. Uh, AP, of course, is the older guy. Uh, Geis is the younger guy. Um, but I think you're going to have to use both of them. I think that you need that one-two punch. Um, Geis is going to be eager to get back out there and show yeah. what he does, but I think he still has a lot of learning to do from the running back position, understanding the schemes, understanding the blocking schemes, where his blocks are supposed to happen. So, and AP has that already. So yeah. I think he just take a back seat for a little bit, learn from the pro, and uh, he'll get his opportunity. And this, you know, Chris Thompson is your third down back, and yeah. that's what he does special. So leave him in that role and let him continue to do his thing. So for me, I think it's the chemistry of those three guys. Of those guys, uh, I always think back to some of the backfields that I was in, you know, having Willis, having having Frankie G in college, you know, having James Jackson, I.J. Davenport in front of me. Then all of a sudden playing with Terrell Davis, Mike Anderson, Orlandis Gary in Denver, coming here, playing with Liddell Betts, Rock Cartwright. And, and the list goes on. When they brought in Sean Alexander, they brought in uh, Larry Johnson, and you had so many guys, Willie Parker, mm -hmm. all these guys in the running backs room. The best chemistry we had outside of college was myself, Liddell, and Rock, and Rock. because mm -hmm. we all understood each other. Yeah. We all fed off of each other. Liddell used to come in on third down, mm -hmm. right? There were some plays you can ask Rock. We would sit on the sideline. I said, L, that's your play. Yeah. You get it. Not because I couldn't run it, but you're better suited for that play. Gotcha. You go out and do it. Right? And when, when it comes to the game time, we didn't go by, oh, I'm going to do first down, second down. Listen, I'm going to carry this tater. And when I look over there on the sideline, somebody better come when get me. When I tap that helmet. Right. When you see me, me. If, I, if I look on the sideline, <laughs> hey, come yeah, on. <laughs> look, give me a play. Yeah. Let me get some water, and I'm coming back. But that was the chemistry we had. We didn't – like, EB stayed out of the way mm -hmm. as far as control. I think this, this running back group, because CT and, and um, AP – are veterans, mm -hmm. they could do that. Yeah. And then you add guys into the mix. If they could get the chemistry and they could get their coach to step out of the way, because it's always, well, you get this play, you get this yeah. play, you get this play. Nah, man, yeah. I'm going to get every play. Yeah. And then when I can't do it, you send L on the field. Mm -hmm. And when L can't do it, if it's a specialty and I'm tired, then Rock come. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? <clears throat> so I think these guys need to get that chemistry. Yeah. If they can get that bond, create that bond. Because it got to be a healthy competition. Yes. Right? In between us. And you add Mike Sellers, uh, you add Mike into the mix uh, with that core as well. So having these guys that – they know you. You understand each other. You know, it would be some plays. Mike Sellers is at tailback. Mm -hmm. It's a short yardage play. Mike, you run down here. You got to run to this brick wall. We need you to pick this up and, and bring your butt off the field. Mm -hmm. Don't get happy. Don't start dancing. You <laughs> run through here and you come back we off the field. We know he does that yeah. well. Yeah. <laughs> but once he do it, but that was the chemistry between us as a running back group. That so, was the chemistry. And then our coach gave us the opportunity to step out of the way. We yeah. didn't have a coach saying, well, you get this play and you get this play. Because when they tried that, it backfired. Oh, no. Oh, no. So, my, you know, one of the questions that, that lingers around me and I'm always asked, what would be something that you can, you know, put your hand on when they're saying the, how many, how guys would be used this year? I mean, I'm, I'm sure that he's the future. We know that. And coming off this kind of uh, injury, do you rush him out there early or do you say, hey, I'm going to spot him here and there? So, you can't. You can't spot him because every player is not suitable. Again, AP, with the wear and tear on AP, comes out of the game often. When AP comes out of the game, guess who needs to be ready to run in? Guys. Gotcha. And on third down, instead of playing, instead of trying to fool people, you know CT is coming on the field. Mm -hmm. That's where he's for. Like, that's where he succeeds at. So mm -hmm. stop trying to fool people. Stop acting as if this is some new creative role that no one has ever seen. Right. We know what your specialists are. Let them do what 
what they do. First and second down, AP and guys. Third down is Chris Thompson. And when Chris Thompson can't do third down, you got other options or put guys on the field. He can go out and get that done. You can't, oh, well, I'm – AP gets this play and he got to run off the field 20 right. yards and guys go and he run off the field 20 yards. I hate to see that. I hate to see, oh, I'm jogging off the field. It's first, second, third down. I'm not coming off the field unless I'm tired. Right. So you send somebody on the field you want to, we're going to have 12 men in the huddle. Do you think that uh, agree, with, with AP being the AP, he's already shooting for 2,000 yards. Do you think that he's going to be able to – because uh, I saw a couple years ago, man, you know, he was unhappy in um, New Orleans, right. you know, with his playing time. And it was early in the years. I mean, it was game one, game two. Do you think that with knowing how the team is going to probably try to use guys early and often, do you think that's something that he's going to be able to live with? I, th I think they should go. I mean, my opinion, I would probably do series. Mm -hmm. You know, I give AP two series. I give guys series. Now, if guys get in there, he got the hot hand, I'm going to leave him in there. Mm -hmm. And that's just something AP's going to have to deal with, you know, because – Ultimately, you can't perform at a high level if you ain't fresh. Yeah. Like CB said, if he tired, he know he can't be as productive as he can. If he's healthy, then he going to come out the game. And I think mm -hmm. that's what, you know, AP and those guys have to do. Like, yeah. you know, I would rotate serious with him first, though. But that's know? at all. That's that's the tight end. That's the wide receiver. Everybody. Right? Yeah, the same way. Bro, all this shuffling, that's how you end up with the penalties, the delay of games. You're shuffling right. all of these assignments. Like, man, leave me on the field. Let me get hot. Let me learn. Let me figure out what's going on mm -hmm. before you have me running in the play, running off a play. My back turned while this play is going on. Mm -hmm. So I didn't even see guys run. I didn't even see right. Chris Thompson run because my back is turning. I'm trying to get some water. And then when I turn around, I got to run back on the field. Like, let me get involved in the game. Mm -hmm. Well, you know what? You guys spoke well and, and you spoke like some coaches. Coaches. And uh, one of the things I want to get to with, um, you know, um, Rock is he, he spent a little time being a coach in Cleveland. It's something that I'm pretty sure CP's been asked. Mm -hmm. I'm asked it every day. Do I think I ever, you know, have a stand in coaching or not? I want to down the road. Right, right. now I love my time off. I'm pretty sure CP said no because he, yeah. he don't seem like he's a <laughs> guy that want to have his time wrapped up in the coaching either. What was that like for you? I know we talked about it a little bit behind the cameras, you know, talking about, you know, what you learned, your experiences. You know, give our listeners and our viewers that same, um, you know, experience you shared with me. For me, it was a rude awakening. I never knew so much time. <laughs> <laughs> I never knew so much time went into coaching, man. Yeah. You know, me, I was offensive quality control. So my responsibility was to do all the run game. Mm. So from the playbooks to game prep, all that. I broke down defenses. I broke down uh, how many times they, every little thing, you can, every little detail you can imagine, I broke down. So I spent a lot of time in the office. My day on the Tuesday was 5.30 in the morning to about 3.30 in the morning and back up at Wednesday morning at 7 a.m. You know what I'm saying? So I had no time to myself. Uh, so I spent a lot of time in the office, man, but I did learn a lot. I learned more about football from that standpoint, from the coaching standpoint, than I knew when I was playing, mm. just because I understood the game. I understood yeah. I understood how blocking schemes were supposed to work. I understood why the linebacker was playing three yards outside, or I mm. understood why the safety was playing three yards outside. Just little things like that, the little minor details that you don't know when you're playing or you can't see when you're playing. Mm -hmm. As far as coaching, I know as being, a, you know, being an athlete, being a player, it's, it's things that we have to learn on the spot. You know, what was it like learning on the spot as a coach? Because I'm pretty sure coming into those doors and, and sitting in that seat, it wasn't just something that just came to you. It's totally different, man. Yeah. It's totally different. Learning how to be on that computer all the time. Yeah. Like, I, I, I'm computer literate, but I'm really computer literate now because I learned so much about wow. drawing and blocking schemes, though. That's what I didn't understand, how you understand you understand the zone, what you're looking for, inside zone, outside zone, all those little details that we never, I never really knew. From a running back standpoint, now that I know. And I'm sure y'all learned that at Miami, though. Only thing you had to do was listen when I was trying to coach you. <laughs> when we was in the room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was yeah, trying yeah. to give you that valuable <laughs> information. When everybody's trying to figure out, well, you know what? And you'll be a great person to discuss this with. I always talk about... Uh, Remember they had us doing scan. They said we couldn't scan. Right. They said, nah, you can't scan. And we were getting killed in practice with a backside blitz. Corner that was the corner. From that was the the corner. You have a Greg Williams. We were getting killed with that. And they said, Well, we can't we can't block him. I said, Okay, you know, I'm just gonna go out and do it just to show you it can be done. I had to the right side, I came all the way back and blocked the left side. They, oh, no, you can't do that. You're going to mess up the play. 
So okay, like cool. I just showed you I could do, do it. Right? We get into the game. That's not gonna happen that way. We it get happens. into the game. <laughs> what happened? And it I happened. picked it up. Corner cat. Wow. Yeah. I picked it up. Right? They say it couldn't happen. We wouldn't put this in. The following week, it was scam protection. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, all of a sudden, I got everybody. We got the entire secondary, and we got the linebackers. Wow. Right. We got scam protection. I'll tell you this. Between between you and Frank Gore, those are the two of the smartest running backs I've ever yeah. been around. No you doubt. Know, I was able to be around him and yeah. let him be around Frank. Those are the two of the smartest backs and some of the best pass protection backs I've mm. ever been around. Both of them got in there and did their thing. Well, you know what, too? Protection. And I'm going to give Coach Solinger a shout out because yeah. I just bumped into Coach Daddy. Solinger down in Miami. And first thing he asked about, man, how's CP doing? Yeah. And I meant to tell you, CP, so I tell, you know, I said on air, but. Honestly, if you watch those guys in Miami the same way, like, yeah. you know, as, as as much as they ran the ball, he he cared more about those guys blocking schemes, you know, making sure they pick up the blitz, Man, making sure they, they do sit it, there and protect the quarterback. He did a excellent job. He, Coach, he did it. Coach, what's his name? Coach, Coach Saul. Coach hey, Saul, look, Coach excellent Saul job. told us, I said, Man, you better put me in and run the ball. He said, Everybody over here can run the ball. He said, Everybody I got can run the ball. If you don't block, you're going to keep standing right here talking to me. I said, damn, that's a good point. He, he made y'all some good backs. He made y'all some good blocking. Hey, you I'm go down the line to all those guys, Adrian, you know, yeah. uh, Frank, uh, Najee, James Jackson, uh, Porter. JJ he, wasn't blocking nothing. He wasn't, but guess what? He had to, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. He didn't want to trust me. It didn't look like theirs, but he got in the way. Hey, you JJ know? come out of the game, boy. You put JJ in to say he got JJ, a block. JJ come uh, on, got yeah. him off that thing. His hamstring hurting him a little bit. Coach, JJ ain't blocking nothing. But one yeah, man, person y'all ain't off blocking. The, hats off for y'all boys for that, man. Well, you know, for one real. of the things, man, I don't want to keep going because I know, you know, one of the things we do on this show is um, um, normally it's Travis. Travis always have something to talk about when we take it. The L. If it's not Travis, it's our producers. We have fabulous and wonderful, you know, producers that behind the scenes that's always thinking and finding things for us to say taking the L. Well, I'm short and quick with things. You know, I don't like to elaborate too long. And taking the L to me is if you haven't paid attention to the Santana Moss Show podcast, either listening to it or watching, it's a big L for you. And for all you guys out there that's been paying attention, I appreciate y'all. So keep telling folks about us. And that's a wrap from the Santana Moss Show. Peace. It's a Santana Moss show. Home of the Blue Ball Dream. Number 89. Hustle all the time. Travis on the right. Hot mic on the left. Every single week is a lyrical.